What's up guys, this is Dr. Antonio Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos come in every week. You don't want to miss them. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about Alex Smith's uh, injury that he sustained about two years ago. I'm going to talk about some of the treatment kind of options, what things uh, may have went wrong, and also to use this video to serve as an educational modality. So if you haven't watched Project 11 with Alex Smith, that featured Alex Smith and talked about his injury, I suggest that you do it. I do want to make a disclaimer that viewer discretion is advised kind of throughout this video. So if you have a weak stomach or if you don't like seeing kind of gory kind of things, I suggest that you uh, turn to another video. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, Alex Smith, who's a quarterback for the Washington Redskins, back in 2018, uh, when they were playing the Houston Texans, he had an injury where he was being tackled by a couple uh, the Texans players and he went down onto his leg. Um, you can notice kind of right away that uh, he was in a lot of pain. Also, you can notice the, the deformity, uh, the hyperextension kind of injury of his tibia. So when someone has an injury at a professional uh, sporting event, they're usually doctors that are there that work with the teams. When I was a resident and on my sports medicine rotation, we worked with the Spurs doctor. So I was able to go to some of the Spurs games. We went into the locker rooms, went, Players got hurt. Um, we, you know, hung out in the back, you know, with the uh, coaches, and you know that that was a lot of fun. So most sporting events, they are, you know, doctors that are working at these games and they take care of these injuries. Well, if the physician that's on the field can't, you know, manage that patient's injury, then that patient goes to the nearest hospital or to the ER. This hospital happened to be Inova Fairfax. It's actually one of the hospitals that we rotated at the, as med students when I went to med school at Georgetown. So I actually did trauma surgery at this hospital here. And this is uh, exactly where he went. So you see, after he went down, um, you know, he had this injury to his leg. He was in, you know, in lots of pain. And in the documentary, they talked about um, as he was, you know, being wheeled off of the field, this is when he started having more pain. Usually you have a, a adrenaline rush that uh, occurs where you know you may not feel pain for a little bit of time after your injury because of all of the catecholamines and the you know fight or flight uh, response you know that kind of uh, mask your pain. Well, he went to the ER and um, you know they got X-rays and they saw he had a comminuted kind of distal tibia distal tip fib fracture. So this is a pretty common injury that we see as orthopedic surgeons. I have seen a lot of these uh, working, you know, as a resident, uh, patients come in with car accidents or fall from a roof, or they uh, get into a injury where they, you know, drop something on their leg. There are lots of different mechanisms of injury that can, you know, cause this injury. And it, this is a pretty bad injury. It takes a lot of force you can imagine the tibia is a pretty, you know, strong and dense bone, especially in a athlete. And the amount of force that it takes to break this bump, this bone, well, if you have, you know, 200, 300 pound linemen that are running after you and fall directly on your leg, uh, you know, that can cause, you know, the bone to break. So usually the things that go through my head when I see an injury like this, I'm always looking for additional injuries um, as a trauma surgeon or as a you know orthopedic surgeon you don't want to be blindsided by that particular injury say for instance there's a femur fracture well you don't want to miss an injury in the hip or the knee or the ankle or the head when i try to do my exam i focus on you know the rest of the body and and you know rule out any other injuries and then i go back to that injury because it can be a what they call a distracting injury so this tibia fracture, you wanna make sure the knee, make sure there's no you know, injuries to the knee or to the ankle. You know, another 
thing that you have to be concerned about is compartment syndrome. This is when blood flow can get down into the leg, but it cannot leave. And then it causes the muscles and the compartments to swell. It's under a lot of pressure. The leg can be uh, deprived of you know, blood supply and you know, nutrients. And then that's a surgical emergency for us. So whenever there's a really high mechanism car going 100 miles per hour and hits a brick wall, you know, you have to be concerned about things like that. So he had this tibia fracture, you know, the question is, um, you know, what to do for this injury. And there were some reports that his bone was sticking out. It's called an open fracture. That's more of a surgical kind of urgency, emergent kind of case for us just because the risk of infection. Usually we give antibiotics within, you know, a few hours of injury to decrease the chance of infection. But, you know, if I was on a call and there was a lot of dirt, rocks, grass, gravel, you know, I may not, I may decide not to do that patient's surgery um, and delay that surgery and just wash them out and kind of stabilize the uh, bone with, uh, it's called an external fixator. And these are usually kind of pins and rods that we put on the outside of the leg. And this basically holds the leg, the uh, fracture in alignment as best as we can. And it's a stabilizing procedure to get them to the next procedure. So, you know, there must not have been, you know, a lot of, you know, rocks, we call it a dirty wound uh, that was, um, you know, from this injury, but you can imagine there can be some, something from the turf, you know, some clothes that gets trapped, you know, under the bone and gets under the skin. Well, that, that can be a problem. So the orthopedic surgeons decided to take Alex Smith to uh, surgery that night. And, you know, they got a really good reduction. We call it open reduction internal fixation. Meaning we make an incision, we open the, uh, the wound. His wound was most likely already open. So we just have to enlarge that incision. Reduction means we get the bones back in a alignment, acceptable alignment, putting the bones back together using instruments, clamps, screws, K wires. And then internal fixation just means that uh, you're holding the bone in place until it heals. So the external fixator is a external device that holds the bone in place. You can treat patients uh, with the external fixator until their bone heals, but no one wants to walk around with all of these metal rods and screws kind of hanging out their leg. So uh, they got a really good reduction, which means a good alignment of the bones. The x-rays look great. The problem is uh, the second day that um, he, we call it post-operative day number two, uh, he, had a fever, he spiked a fever. And usually when someone spikes a fever after surgery, lots of different reasons or causes for a fever. It could be a PE, pulmonary embolism. It could be an infection. It could be atelectasis, which means the lungs are not opening up the way they should. They're not taking deep enough breaths. It could be a UTI. It could be, you know, a lot of different things that can cause fevers, medications. So you have to figure out like what's causing this fever. And his fever, you know, jumped up to 102, which is uh, really concerning. And usually when this happens, we get called as orthopedic surgeons from the general surgeons to uh, look at their wounds, make sure their incisions are healing fine. There's no pus. There's no uh, drainage from the wounds, uh, which can indicate an infection. He also was growing something out of his blood cultures, which is really problematic just because there was a inoculation of some bacterium that got into his bloodstream, which can cause you to be really sick. And it actually did. It caused him to be septic. And this is basically a serious life-threatening infection because by lots of different things that uh, can actually kill a patient. Uh, sepsis, if you don't treat it with antibiotics and IV fluid resuscitation, which means giving the patient uh, fluids, uh, they they can't can die. Their blood pressure drops. Their their mental status is off. You can see from this picture here that uh, he looks like you know he's not acting himself. He's act, acting a little weird. So when they took off his dressing for the second time, they saw that uh, he had a lot of blisters and kind of ecchymosis and discoloration of his skin. And this is a really concerning kind of picture here, uh, just because when I think of someone who is septic, 
who has low blood pressure, who has a fever, who has uh, bacteria in their blood, and they have this picture here, I'm thinking, you know, life-threatening infection. And they have the conversation with the, the wife and, you know, the family. Hey, what do you guys want us to do? Uh, so this is a condition called necrotizing fasciitis. It's a life-threatening infection. They call it the flesh-eating bacteria where the infection kind of spreads along the fascial kind of linings, the layer that's outside right under the skin and can spread through the body really rapidly. You know, I've seen this in patients in the ER, you know, working on on trauma surgery where as soon as I walk into the door, the patient, they, they just have this look of death. They, they look like, you know, they, you know, two minutes from now, they, they're going to crash and uh, they're going to die. So I've actually rushed a lot of patients to the operating room for this same very condition. Um, you know, lots of it is, you know, diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes, and they have these ulcers and this uh, infection, you know, it, it's usually a multi kind of polymicrobial infection, which means there's lots of different types of bacteria that are causing this infection. So, you know, they had the discussion about limb salvage versus amputation. And this is the discussion what we have with a lot of patients who have injuries to their limbs, and we're trying to decide whether we should go down the path of saving this patient's limb, or should we amputate their leg? And you know, that's a really hard discussion to have with a patient and the family. But you know, I you know, ha had to make decisions as a surgeon, hey, this patient's leg needs to come off tonight. I need to cut this, this gentleman's leg off or he's gonna die. So you know, that's the discussion you have to have with patients. You know, with Alex Smith, they actually decided to take this patient back to the operating room immediately and do a formal debridement. Uh, we call it an IND. Um, you know, this is, you know, really life-threatening, you know, problem that needs urgent attention. So usually these patients, you know, they require multiple procedures. You have to take them back and make sure that uh, there's no, you know, active infection. You have to debride the bone, the skin, make sure, you know, it's not spreading up the leg. You know, in, in any case that, that you know, they, they feel like he's becoming, you know, too unstable, they'll just cut his leg off, which is, you know, crazy for an NFL athlete to have no leg, but, you know, he can't play football if he's dead. So, uh, you know, luckily they did these operations and they were able to save his leg. They washed him out multiple times. They had to transfer muscle from one portion of his body to another. You can see the uh, skin grafts, uh, sites that they harvested the skin to cover that area, that muscle transfer. And, um, and you see this circular frame, or this is a different type of external fixator that is used to hold the uh, bone in place while he's undergoing these uh, procedures. So, you know, there's several different, you know, ways to fix this. We can use plates and screws, or we can place a rod. But uh, this fracture actually extended all the way down to his ankle joint. Um, you can put a rod and fix this, but, um, you know, given the fact that it's going down to his ankle joint, uh, you want to get a really good um, reduction on your articular surface, which means the, the ankle joints, because the incident, incidence of arthritis is really high if there's any step off of the bone. So it's really essential to get a, a good reduction. So uh, this is just my kind of thoughts on Alex Smith's uh, injury and his uh, course that he had. Uh, he had a tibia fracture that was apparently open, which means the bone was sticking out of his leg. Um, you know, there was some type of infection that uh, caused him to get really sick. He got necrotizing fasciitis that, you know, luckily after 17, 18 surgeries, he pulled through and uh, hopefully we can see him back in the uh, NFL here soon. But uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, what are your thoughts? Have you guys seen Project 11? Let me know what you think. Uh, this is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.